This is a cycloidal gear. First up is the CDC type housing. Next, we need an input shaft to transmit power into the system. The wave force is delivered to the cycloidal disc is quite unique. The shaft doesn't directly rotate the disc it uses bearings in between. Instead, this eccentric cam transforms the rotation into an off-center, wobbling motion. It takes the input rotary energy, turns it into vibration-like motion, and then transforms it back into smooth rotational output. So why go through such a complex process? Because the reduced rotational speed gives us high torque and more precise control. Most designs use two cycloidal discs. Why two discs? To cancel vibration and reduce torque ripple. By placing the discs symmetrically, they balance out each other's vibration. So, what is torque ripple? Think about riding a bicycle. When the pedals are at the top or bottom, it's harder to push. But when they're horizontal, it's much easier. That uneven delivery of force is what we call torque ripple. Using two cycloidal discs helps eliminate that issue. Now, take a close look at the number of lobes on the disc. This tells us the gear ratio of the system. These openings in the disc are where the output pins go. Once the pins are in place, the system produces its final output motion. Now it's time to see how the cycloidal gear actually moves when powered. Here's my powerful hand turning the input shaft. With this gear ratio, when the input shaft turns 49 times, the output turns just once. And if the input spins clockwise, the output rotates counterclockwise. Pretty fascinating, right?